Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. If you're anything like me, you've probably been blown away by the incredible images that Mid Journey can create. But guess what? Mid Journey is taking it to the next level. Today, we're diving into the exciting world of Mid Journey video generation where you can transform your static images into captivating five-second video clips. This is a game changer, and it's surprisingly simple to do. We'll cover everything from getting started to pro tips for getting the best results. Getting started. Where to animate? First things first, you'll need to head over to the MidJourney website at midjourney.com to access the video generation features. This isn't available on Discord just yet for video creation, so make sure you're logged in there. If you've been using Midjourney through Discord, simply choose the Continue with Discord option when logging into the website. If you've never used Midjourney before, then you can just continue with the sign up process. Now, before we start animating, there are a few important things to keep in mind. All planteers can generate videos in fast mode. However, if you want to use relaxed mode for video generation, you'll need a pro or mega plan. Don't worry, they won't lock you into a plan straight away. But if you don't want to get a paid membership plan, there are a few things to consider. Some plans have added benefits that the lowest plan doesn't have. All have fast hours included. The higher the plan, the more fast hours you get. Fast hours means the time that you have allocated to use with their faster graphics processing unit. So you can create images and videos in seconds rather than minutes. Only Pro Plan and Up has access to relaxed hours. Relaxed hours are the time you have with the slow graphics processing time. And for both the Pro and Mega plans, you have an unlimited amount of relaxed hours. On the standard plan, you do have access to unlimited image generation. So even if you run out of fast hours, you can continue to work. You just have to be a bit more patient. But it saves you money in the long run from not having to top up your fast hours every time you run out. Video generation uses more GPU time, about eight times more than generating a regular image. So be mindful of your usage. The other huge advantage to the higher tier plans is access to stealth mode. Stealth mode allows you to work on your images and video without them being published on the public thread, which is what happens by default. This is important commercially as it prevents other users from easily being able to copy your work and create derivative generations that might end up competing with your own final product when it goes public. Once you're signed in, you want to go to the create page. This is your personal creative space. It's where you'll see your images appear in real time as they generate. Now for the fun part. Right at the top, you'll see this bar that says Imagine. This is where you bring your ideas to life. Think of it as a magic wand. You're going to type a description of whatever you want to see, and this is called a prompt. Once your prompt is in, just hit enter, and now you watch. This is the coolest part. Midjourney takes your words and starts to build four unique images based on your prompt. You can see them go from blurry shapes into detailed works of art. And then boom, once it hits 100%, you are done. Just like that, you've created your first set of AI images with Midjourney. How easy was that? See, simple. But creating the image is just the first step. Writing and crafting prompts is an art form all by itself. Getting really specific with styles, camera angles, and lighting can make your creations from good to absolutely mind-blowing. If you want to dive deeper and become a prompt crafting master, Midjourney has fantastic articles on their site called Prompt Basics and the Art of Prompting. I'll leave links to those in the description below. But for now, I want to focus on this exciting new feature, video generation. Animating your Midjourney images. Let's start with images you've already created in Midjourney. This is super easy. When you hover over an image in your gallery, you'll now see a shortcut button to animate it. Or if you click on the image to open it up, you'll find animate image buttons right below the create action section. You'll see two options, auto and manual. This is the quickest way to get a video. Midjourney will automatically start generating a five second video using your image as the first frame. 
If you want more control, choose Manual. This will bring your image into the image bar, allowing you to add or adjust the text prompt before generating your video. This is great for guiding the motion or adding new events to your scene. A quick note, any parameters you used for your original image will automatically be removed when generating videos. This keeps things streamlined for video output. Animating your own images. What if you want to animate an image you didn't create in Midjourney? No problem, you can upload your own. Click on the image icon on the Imagine bar. This opens your images panel where you can either upload new images or select from the ones you've already uploaded. Simply drag and drop the image into the starting frame section or click on it in your uploads library. Your image will then appear in the Imagine bar ready to be animated. If you want to use the same image with multiple prompts, click on the lock icon to keep it pinned to the Imagine bar. This saves you from having to re-upload it every time. It's important to know that certain other image reference types like Image Prompt, Style Reference, or Omni Reference are not compatible with video generation. For video, we're sticking to the starting frame method. Video Settings and Playback. You also have some control over your video settings. With an image selected as your starting frame, click the settings icon in the image bar. Here you can adjust your default motion settings, GPU speed and stealth mode. These settings are synced with your image generation settings, which is super convenient. Once your videos are done generating, playing them back is simple. Just hover your mouse over them in the create page. For more control, you can manually scrub through your video. Hold down the control key on your keyboard or command on Mac and move your mouse back and forth over the video. This lets you play it at your own speed, which is great for examining specific frames. Mastering video motion. Now let's talk about controlling the motion of your videos. This is where the magic really happens. You have two main motion settings, low motion and high motion. You can select these using the corresponding buttons on the website or by adding the motion low or motion high to the end of your video prompt. Low motion is more likely to give you still scenes, subtle camera movements, slow motion or small character movements. It's great for maintaining the calm or focused feel. High motion will result in bigger camera movements and larger character movements. While it can create dynamic scenes, be aware that this might also lead to some unrealistic or glitchy movements. Experiment to see what works best. For even more precise motion control, you can use the RAW parameter in your video prompts. Similar to RAW mode for images, adding RAW reduces Midjourney's extra creative flair, giving your text prompt more influence over the outcome. This is fantastic if you have very specific vision for the motion. I promised you some advanced tips, so here are some that I'm trying that I got from the Future Tech Pilot YouTube channel. Links in the description below. These prompts don't always work because they're not native to Midjourney. By default, Midjourney video only has two options, low motion and high motion. But you can try these and let us know about the results. Just as I was completing this video, Midjourney rolled out a new feature on start frame animation. Now you can loop your videos. So now instead of the auto and manual option you had before, loop has replaced manual and manual is still there as an option as a link in the animate image section. You can also get to the new loop option from the imagine bar in your start frame options just here. And now loop motion allows you to loop your 5 second video so that the first and last frame are the same. This is great for creating character idling animation in scenes. Not only that, but this new frame to frame option means you can have complete control of how your scene will look at the beginning and the end of the animation, which really helps for keeping the characters and the objects consistent within an extended sequence. Try zoom in and zoom out. If you get no results, try adding speed to the description. Slow zoom out, fast zoom in. Speed makes things work more often, but results are not guaranteed in Midjourney. Try and give extra details. Try zoom out to a full body shot. 
If you want the camera to stay still, try a static shot of the subject, or try a static shot of the subject with the trees blowing in the wind. You can try this if there are secondary natural elements in the animation you want to animate. Secondary animation is a reference to the nuances in the animation that are extra to the main animation. Instead of zoom in or out, try the camera is getting closer. If you want the camera to zoom in to a specific element, try the camera is getting closer to that element. If you want the camera to follow a subject, try a tracking shot. You can try adding motion blur to the camera. For example, try the camera tracks the spaceship with motion blur. Try to prompt for the viewer instead of the camera. For example, the viewer moves away from the subject. The viewer gets closer to the subject. You could try and pan with the subject stands still and the viewer moves to the left. I would try as many of these prompts as you can and then note them down for future reference as part of your prompt toolbox. Here is one that I have had some success with that future tech pilot didn't mention in his video. Slow motion shot of the subject. Specifically, try super slow motion shot of the subject. Another problem that I had to find a workaround for was that by default, Midjourney tries to find as many elements in a scene to animate. So if you've got a character with a mouth, often it will add speaking or speech, or yelling, or singing, or whatever it thinks that the character should be doing at the time. But what if you want to export that video and add a lip sync animation later, which you can do with some third party software. So in that case, it's best if you define things like, maybe say the character is quietly walking, or the character is walking in silence with a neutral expression. Just add those kind of added descriptors to try and rein in Midjourney's natural inclination to add as much movement in the scene and shot as possible. I know what you're thinking. Five seconds isn't very long for a video. What if you want a longer generation? Well, Midjourney has got that covered too. By default, you get four video generations. Once you have reviewed them, which you can do by hovering over the video, you can choose which one you want to extend. While you are hovering over the video, you'll see two options. Extend Auto and Extend Manual. If you choose Extend Auto, the video will automatically extend to 5 seconds. You can keep on doing this process and extending the video in 5 second increments up to a length of 21 seconds. Automatic Extend keeps the text prompt from the original video while Manual Extend gives you the option to change the text prompt to include new events and change the motion options from the last video. Maybe you want the motion to be low in the first 5 seconds, but in the next 5 seconds you want the motion to be high. Manual Extend gives you that option. So, what if you want even longer than 21 seconds? I would export the final frame of the first 21 second video using your video software or your media playback application at the same resolution as the video. Then import it back into Midjourney. Next create one or more 21 second generations, repeating this process. And then finally stitch them together in your video editing software to make a much longer video. Try as many of these and any you can think of. If you have any success, let us know in the comments below. We would love to hear what has worked for you so we can continue to grow as a community together. Once your video is generated, you might be wondering about its quality and dimensions. 
Midjourney videos are generated in 480p or standard definition. The exact shape and size of your video will match the aspect ratio of your starting image. So if your starting image was a square one to one, your video will be 624 by 624 pixels. If it was widescreen, 16 by 9, it will be 832 by 464 pixels. Keep in mind that Midjourney might make slight adjustments to the aspect ratio in some cases. Downloading your creations. Finally, once you're happy with your video, you'll want to download it. When you right click on a video from your create or organize page, you'll see two download options. Download for social, this is what you'll want if you're sharing on platforms like Instagram, TikTok, or YouTube Shorts. It uses an optimized encoder to reduce compression so your videos will look crisp and clear. This downloads as an MP4 file. Or you can choose to download raw video. This downloads the original video file generated by Midjourney, also as an MP4. And there you have it. Turning your mid-journey images into dynamic videos is a powerful new feature that opens up the world of creative possibilities. Whether you're making short animations for social media or just experimenting with motion, mid-journey makes it incredibly accessible. I encourage you to jump in. Experiment with different images, prompts, and motion settings. The more you play around, the more you'll discover what's possible. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more AI creativity tutorials, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. What kind of videos are you excited to create with Midjourney? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.